Hi and welcome to another episode of Wine and Wisdom. I'm Thomas Le Huang and you're listening to the TO podcast where knowledge is shared and no one takes themselves too seriously. Hi guys, uh, up to my wine now. It's a Grand Burge from the Barossa Valley, Message 2012. It's a Shiraz, and what? And this wine has been named after the great grandfather, who actually was the first person to come from England. He grew up here in the Barossa Valley and started the winery itself. Wow! Yeah. And so, in in his honor, the the, the uh, this company decided we are going to just create just that one wine, and it's going to just bear his name. Mm. Okay, so let's try this here. Let me decant it. How this much is you? a bottle, TL? It's uh, normally uh, 190. 190 dollar bottle of wine that's going to lose to Chris. And um, it you. was. Um, Actually reduced by our friends from Vintage Cellars to 120 for the week. It's going to go back up. This will be the most expensive bottle we've drunk on here? No, it's not true. No, no, no. I said, is it? I was asking. I know it's not. When have we added more than Was the limit 100? I, I got... Uh, yeah, over. I got oh, minimum. No, over, over, yeah. No, I had... Uh, no, we've, we've gone over a few times. Have we? Yeah. I had a French one where it was a hundred and fifty something. Do you no, I'm saying this is a hundred and ninety dollar bottle. So oh yeah, no. Yeah. But if you only got it for one twenty, it's one twenty. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still on, waiting try, to go over nine dollars. Right? So. What Ooh, is the it? Colour. Far out. That's, oh. that's something special. I can smell it from here. Don't talk it up, Chris. I'm backing you, mate. Mm. What do you reckon, boys and girl? Did you try? Thank you. <coughs> yeah, p- tried it when it was first poured. Yes. Mm. Need some time. You're a bit young, I think. <laughs> I like mine a little bit better so far. I'm with you. I don't. <laughs> You're going for a free lunch, you know. You know, what I like about, you know what I like about you? Mm. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, the feeling's mutual. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to be dainty. What was the saying? We can be anything, be what? Be nice? Calm. No. Thomas Calm. had my back last week. Be nice, not narcissistic. Hey, hey, the thing is, what, what we just finished a session <laughs> about being truthful. <laughs> Truthful, right? And so honest, you're gonna be kind, <laughs> being to be honest, kind. right? And then suddenly I have two lies. This is wrong. I think they owe they owe us lunch. I agree. I'm not lying. Oh, look For how being defensive this. he gets because being <laughs> picking on his wine. Oh my gosh! <laughs> hey, this is the Viet Cong coming out. Seriously, that's right. Uh, give me some into wine. the tunnels. Give <laughs> me some wine, man. And actually, give make some more. And and I think that the team may want it. They can have mine. It's, it's not my style. To wait till midnight to drive home at this rate. Thank you. Without your mobile phone. This is true. You dickhead. <sighs> I don't like... I, I, Thank you. No, I mean it. Pardon. I mean it. Anyone who... I've got a big problem with, um, with people the driving with their mobile phones. <laughs> oh, okay. No, people <laughs> driving... Because got fined by them. It used to speaking. be, back in the day, if someone who was... Who did 20Ks if, over? If someone was swerving, there was no one else on the road yeah. except that policeman, right? So there was no one else in danger mm. when I was doing 20Ks over. But it used to be back in the day, if someone was swerving all person. over the road in front of you or behind you or beside you, you, you go, that guy's pissed. Now, you can pretty much guarantee that someone's on their What's phone. What's the difference between speeding and being on your phone? Both of them are breaking the law. I don't care about breaking the law. I'm talking about how dangerous it is. And speeding isn't. I can drive in a straight line 20Ks over the speed limit without killing anyone. Can, you cannot you know, send a text message. because you won't be able message. to stop in time. Mate, no, you're not going to win this argument, mate. Not a chance. <laughs> I'd have to agree with Cam on You that start one. texting on your phone while time. you're driving, you're a your attention isn't on the road, your attention is on your phone. If you're speeding, your attention is more on the road. Sounds like a cop out to me. No, I don't. Oh, look, I shouldn't shouldn't speed, shouldn't get done for speeding. But as far as the danger level goes, like, yeah. No, absolutely. but hold on, hold on. When you are pissed, yes. <laughs> do they ask you to walk on one line? Yes. Yes? And if you swerve left or right? You right? go on. Okay. If you get arrested for uh Texting on on the phone, they should really give you a test. If you can do it with one finger, there's no problem. <laughs> if you can walk a straight line, <laughs> I was wondering where you're going with this. If you can walk a straight line and send a text message with one finger, singing the national anthem, uh, it you're means right. that you, you're, you're a patriot. 
And they give you extra points on your license. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, who are we discussing this week? Dalton Trumbo. He's got the best name ever. He does. Eh? Yeah, what a it? name. Dalton a name. Trumbo. You know what? I, I, can I just say, I really love this, you change this segment where they're all quick. With, we don't like talking losing. about people. We all pick someone. With, yeah. Deflection. I'm really enjoying it because I'm getting to really expand sort of the understanding of a lot of different characters. It's, I think it's fantastic. And if um, he was prejudiced in any way. Yeah, if it was pre- prejudiced, which yeah. is the word I was trying to say. So prejudiced. Thank you, Cam. Thanks for the English lesson. That's all right, mate. Um, for example, last week, I'm now a fan of Federer. What a, what a champion. What an absolute legend. Even though um, he just pulled out of the bloody French Open. Well, you know, we're all... You don't start a tournament and pull out halfway to save That's yourself Roland for the Garris, next one. right? The French Open is Roland yeah. Garros, right? Yep. The same. Yeah, he's got a back issue, Ben. No, it was his knees. He was saved. He's got a knee issue. Here you go. Wants to be right for Wimbledon. Why start the tournament if you're not going to finish the tournament? He didn't know he wasn't going to finish it, otherwise right. he wouldn't have started it. I'll see how I hear him on it. He, he's the press, uh, sorry, the, we'll press go, we'll the press <laughs> thing read. I'll see how I feel when I wake up in the morning. Sorry, I didn't know that was an option in the Grand okay, so tournament. Anyway, moving back to what I was saying sorry. was I really like this segment and and Donald Trump, no, <laughs> Dalton, <Trump>. <laughs> Dalton, <laughs> not, not the other dude. That was intentional. You're talking oh. about a serious guy, not Dalton a Trump. Trumbull. Yeah, um, I had no idea who he was. I had never heard of him before. Mm-hmm. I had. Where did the L come from? It's Trumbo. Okay, the, him. <laughs> Trumbull. Man, stop being prejudiced. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, it was a. I, I knew of the issue that he went through with the Hollywood Ten, but mate, share it with us because, man. What did you guys get? What did you guys no, get? You picked him. Yeah, you yeah, introduced yeah, we him. Start, yeah. No, I can talk to uh, about him. After you. No. I found him hard to read about because there was a lot, like there was a lot to read. So I listened. Um, I picked up last week that Chris was doing a lot of YouTube videos and stuff like that. So I went to a podcast about him and it was about The Fall from Grace was the title of the podcast and it was talking about obviously his history but then the events that turned to him yep. going to jail and all of those kinds of things. So um, – I suppose for me, he was he was hard to study. He was hard to study because I didn't know a lot about him. Yes. Whereas all the other people that we've studied before, I've known at least something about them. So for him, it was literally like learning from scratch. Um, but it was interesting. It was he was interesting. a screenwriter, okay? Yeah. Right. The most successful and probably uh, highly paid, most successful s- screenwriter. And right after the war, there was a movement in America, the Second World War, I mean, there was a, a movement in America that was about getting rid of anything that was communist because America was having a huge problem with Russia over Berlin. And so you have here a, a portion of the society who believes in doing good and who noticed that a lot of people who were in the movie industry were not getting paid. There was, for example, a, a great company who did that decided to close shop mainly so that they could save so, some money. They couldn't care less about the 10,000 people they, they laid off. They just wanted to make profit. So these kind of guys, like the Dalton Trumbo, went in and said, no, we got to stand up for this. Th- this is the wrong thing. Yeah. And because of that, because of the protest that uh, started, suddenly there was a portion of the Hollywood industry that decided, do you know what? That started by these guys who are communists. They're doing it to wreck us. And it was nothing else but revenge. We just finished October that talked about do nothing, don't become one of them. Mm. And he was about mounted on revenge, a section of society that was out there to just blackmail the rest of society or or, or the guys that were pretending to be communists. Yeah, I'd, uh, the reading I did, I only ended up r- writing four or five lines because it summed it up. We we just come through October where it talked about finding your passion is one of your jobs and doing the right thing is the other job. And it also talked about having standards, or values or principles and sticking to them no matter what. Which so did. he's a guy who had unwavering standards to the point where he got kicked out of Hollywood, wasn't allowed to be recognised on any movies that he did. He loved his job enough that he kept doing movies under fake names and could take no credit for it. So when we talk about entertainers not being stoic because they're chasing the fame, he's a guy who still kept doing what he was doing even though he was going to get no recognition for it. Um, 
And obviously threatened with all of that, he stuck to his values anyway and kept doing what he was doing. Yep. So I I um I sort of read through his biography and all that stuff and only yeah, only come to one sort of line. It was he's one of the more stoic people that we've <coughs> yeah we've yeah, um, spot on there too. Interesting. Um, one of the things that came up from the podcast that I listened to was that he felt that when he was writing under those fake names was when he did his best work because he couldn't be judged. Didn't matter if he failed. There's no consequences. There was so no consequences. It, he could be his his authentic self, and it was it was something that came up that said you know he he felt that when he was um, writing um, uh, like as under a different name. He Wait. found that his best work was then, and once they, um, once it came out in the media that it was him under these, it was Richard, someone, rich someone or other, yep. that he'd um, put this um, thing Super under, good. and didn't turn up to receive the award, and the you know the media found out that it was him. So he won an Oscar for one of his things. He did that he had written and given to someone else's self. Yeah, but he felt that he could he could never actually get back to that level again after they realized it was him. He's, he never um, declined to say that it was it was him. He did say, "Look, I am writing under a different name," but he never ever said that's mine. So, ever. so later on, he did. So once at he, the time, yeah, at the time, he never did it. That's when, when he come, said, "I am Robert Rich." Yeah, when he came back, he, he did Robert Rich. He took uh, credit for uh, the two or three really big movies that he did when he was under pseudonyms. Not, not the shit ones. <laughs> <laughs> not all the not all the ones that were making the the, the, yeah. the small dollars for him to turn the you know. Yeah. The, you know, put bread and milk on the table. Um, we've got to go back a little bit to understand sort of the history on this guy because before the Second World War started, he actually joined the Communist Party of America. Mm. And he, re he joined that because the beliefs he had were what, as you were saying before, and I don't know the terminology in politics, but it falls under the Communist Prejudice. belief. No, it's isolating isolatingism. 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 <laughs> it's something along those lines, right, where... Uh, a, uh, a belief, uh, like his belief is communist, but he believes a country should isolate themselves from the troubles of external factors. So not get involved in wars, not get involved in polit um, external politics, you worry about the country. And at that time, it was very anti-US mm. sort of uh, rhetoric, where they were saying, you know, we've got to fight the Chinese, we've got to fight the Germans, uh, sorry, Japanese, we've got to fight the Germans and so forth. So... Um, he was anti that. And he wrote a book called Johnny's Got Your Gun. Uh, and Johnny's Got Your Gun is a book about anti-war. So it was a bestseller. And when the war started, he, him and his uh, publisher decided to stop printing. Um, and then all his fans started writing him letters saying, you know, uh, talking about anti-separatism and... Uh, Semitism. Mate. Thank you, that one. Jesus and Christ. Listen, you're, you're my right. translator. Shut up and drink wine. Anti-separatism. Um, and uh, about... You know, Septic tank. About America shouldn't enter the war and so forth and so forth. He reported that to the FBI. <laughs> it's for people who prefer connected sewage. Shut, shut up. Uh, he reported that to the FBI and the FBI actually, he goes, it's one of the biggest mistakes because they actually then started investigating him, not the people that were writing to him. Um, so that was one of his biggest turns, that he actually put himself on the sort of... Um, put a target on his own back mm. uh, by reporting these issues to um, the FBI. He had a um, an issue with a lot of his contracts. He, there was a political clause in his contracts and he um, kind of was always... Um, now, Sep now I'm stuck, <laughs> stuck for the word. He was debating about these flaws in his <laughs> contract to do with po politics because he didn't want to be basically put in this closet about politics. He wanted to be able to yeah. have his opinion, but in, under his contract he wasn't allowed to. And he was always questioning that with his um, with his scripts and his contracts that he didn't want that in there. Yeah. But it, you know, it was it's either in or it's not. Like there was no in between. I think you're spot on, Thomas, when you said that. There was too many sort of higher powers that were saying, you are trying to fight for... You're trying to take dollars from our pockets, basically, because you want equal rights for set builders and, you know, uh, and runners and, you know, makeup artists and so forth to be paid fairly for what they're doing. You're making millions and millions from these shows and these guys are struggling to put food on the table. And so he was that voice for the ordinary guy. And he, I think, I, it, it really looked to me like he was set up. All of them were set up, and the, unfortunately, we're using one guy, 
but there was thousands upon thousands of people that were destroyed over this, um, what do they call it, the, the Red Files or something? The, the Hollywood Blacklist. Ho- the, or the Blacklist, that's right. The blacklist. It was the Hollywood 10, but before that it was the something 19. It was 19 of them and then it dwindled down to 10. And that's when they got named When you look Hollywood into it, the, the famous names that supported them to start with, like Humphrey Bogart, Lauren Bacall, um, there's a lot of famous people that really sort of supported them uh, and saying, guys, you, you need to listen to what they're saying. What they're saying is fair and just. They, they want you know, equal rights for these guys to be able to make a little bit more money. They, they're giving you everything and taking nothing. Uh, and uh, so he had a lot of support, but when they started to put the hard word on them about, you know, who do you know who's a communist, who's a communist, and all that sort of stuff, everybody started to buckle or pull out or, and pull away from sort of standing up for those rights. So TL, he wanted to be an agent for change. Did he affect any? <clears throat> I think he did. I think he did. Um, but life is... Um it's an, an eternal back and forth. And, and I think that he really, he, people need to know that he went to jail for 11 months. Mm. I mean, you, you kind of have to ask yourself this. You're very comfortable. You, you've got a lot of money behind you. You're rich. You stand up for something that really, if you, he took back some of the things he said, they would have left him alone. Mm. Right? No problem. But he stood up and said, no, I'm not going to go back on this and I'm not going to go back on my values. Mm. They strip him of everything. Goes to jail. Loses that beautiful property and all these things he's got around. Lose even his name. Now he has to write anonymously, right? Anonymously. And so... <laughs> it's contagious. Anonymous. <laughs> yeah. Lee. Something and, in the air today. <laughs> and still, even when he's winning, he keeps on... Being anonymous. Yeah. And then slowly something happens. People start to come around. And Kirk Douglas was one of the yeah. like fierce defender of him, right? When he did Spartacus, he, he wanted his name to be on it. And just so you think about some of that stuff. So how it does one man slowly win everyone over? I mean, that to me is a giant. Consistent was- message, yeah. Yeah. That's the key to it. There was something that happened in that hearing and it was they basically said to him, these questions that we're asking, it's a yes or no answer. You either answer Ooh. yes or you answer no. I loved it. Yeah. And and there was one question that I can't remember what it was, but they got to and he said they asked the question. He wouldn't answer yes or no and he said, So did my question to the last answer um get accepted? And they kept coming back with these other things and he's he wouldn't answer the question yes or no because he knew what that would mean. He he was saying, like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to come back to you with something. And they, they wouldn't take it. It was just, if it's yes, you know, you're gone. If it's no, then we'll let you, we'll let you off kind of thing. What I found absolutely hilarious is the guy that was in charge of that congressional hearing was put in prison the same time as he was in for contempt for tax evasion. Oh, really? Huh. Didn't know that. And... Yeah, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. The guy that was questioning him and overseeing the whole hearing, that um, congressional hearing, yeah, he got caught out. But anyway. Is that a thing called karma? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's very good. And he saw him in prison apparently and it said something to him along the lines of, I'm here because I didn't say something. You're here because you, you're a criminal. But anyway. So one of the reasons I wanted to share him with you is I think he's very contemporary that today we're still living in an age where maybe the tool is different, is social media, where if you lie loud enough, maybe the rest of the world can take it as, as if it was true. Mm. And today people don't care about the truth. It's just about whether it fits their lifestyle and it looks good. What's yeah. popular. Yeah. And he didn't stand for that. But like, like everything else, if you stand uh, steadfast against whatever is wrong, you always win in the end. Maybe He didn't expect it to win probably that fast, but it did happen to him eventually. Mm. And the other reason is that I think he is one of the true stories. We were talking about last time about what would we think a stoic it was. And this guy, now that you studied, you can see all that stuff. Suffering was not nothing for him. 
Yeah. He stands by the truth. Stands by his and, values. And, and it, it, he wouldn't allow that to change him. He actually used that to become even better. Now, no one is perfect, right? And, and so when you really study a little bit about him and you see that he was so obsessed about his writing that his family took second, maybe I don't agree with some of those. Again, you know, everyone's got their own life and everyone's scolded upon by their own souls. Yeah? But I think that, you know, standing up like this and letting go of all your fortune and go to jail, how many of us around this table would do that when you have three children? You're going to have a fortune first, mate. I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> I'm talking to the other two. He, <laughs> he can't get blood from a stone. Is it? He, his, uh, his speech at the Writers Guild many, many years later, and I, it was called, I don't know if it was called the Forgiveness Speech or whatever it was. It's a beautiful speech, huh? It was a fantastic speech, very, very stoic. If you actually listen to the speech, look at the words, very stoic, very neutral. Um, saying Didn't want to blame anyone. It, Exactly right. Unbelievable speech. Yeah. I mean, you'd ex- and a speech you'd expect from a writer of his calibre, um, but a- absolutely unreal. And I was re- listening to that speech thinking, that's a stoic. Mm. Just that speech there, that's, that's stoicism. You can see it in it. So I was, I was a bit, and it might be, it's not off topic, but with a name like that, I'm shocked I'd never heard of the bloke. Where did you find him? How, like, why did you... How did you come oh, across him? You just have to read a little bit about everything. And then suddenly you get onto stuff and then you click here, you click there, and then you suddenly get onto... It was pretty people. random choice. Auto-corrected. Yeah. Yeah, Google. Was, he wrote I, I was, Donald I was, Trump and it came up I with I was Dalton going Trumper. for Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> he was In the clown section and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I got lost <laughs> into the serious section of life and then I got mm. it. But j- really, you have a look. It's a somewhat D- random... Dalton pick. Trumbo is n- the probably... Totally the opposite of Donald Trump. Yeah, oh, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a funny bit that we're talking about yeah, this now. Well. So one stands by what's right. What what the other one stands by what's a lie. It's popular. <laughs> what's how do I how do I manipulate people with this? You know, you you look at things that are for the moment in the news. Now now that he's out, suddenly the uh, telephone conversation he had with the president of. Ukraine has emerged. Suddenly, the phone conversation that Giuliani had when he was trying to push for that quid pro quo is now coming out. I mean, seriously, we, the companies of the world, we, we just bait. Yeah. People tell us whatever they want, they, they advance whatever they want, and we just take it for granted. And this is why I think around this table, what we try and do is to evolve as human beings where we're not going to be swayed by people who try to uh, shove you a few bits of articles. We'll do our research. And so when I went back to that Dalton Trumbo, you see that you know, 60, 70 years ago, they were doing the same thing. Uh, uh, John Wayne, who was probably one of the best in that field, who went out and carried the flag for these idiots, right? Trying to just put everyone down because, you know why? Because I'm John Wayne and I can. It was anti-American, so to speak. It was anti-American. And that's the rhetoric they had. They all had. The people that were against them, it's anti-American, anti-American. I thought it was... The the bits we learnt, uh, the bits I learnt apart from that about this um, was crazy. Uh, Charlie Chaplin got expelled from America. He went to England um, during this period and was considered a communist sympathiser. America wouldn't let him back into the country. He was an American citizen. Would not. And for 20 years, he had to live abroad. He lived in America, uh, I think it was England, for 20 years while this went through. It was, it was crazy. The, you know, the um, after effects was unbelievable. Yeah, if you dig deep, you see a lot of things like Walt Disney. Well, he was he was one of the ones who were underpaying his cartoonist. That yes. was one of the ones where it started. A- and he also went after these kind of uh, things, all right, because it undermined his plans. Yeah. Even though Walt Disney has never named people. He went against anyone who displayed communistic kind of behaviour, such as uh, having a strike to... Vindicate your point, right? But he quickly disappeared because he went, no, I, I think I'm going the wrong way. You know, th- this, this is the thing. I, I, I still wonder every time that I think of Dalton Trumbo, would I do this? Mm. 
Mm. I had three children, and, and and I have now still two two young ones who that, that depend on me. Really, would I do this? Would I spend eleven ye- months in jail? Imagine would the look on Alex's face when he went to pay something with your credit card and it was declined <laughs> because. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it for him, mate. Stay out of jail. <laughs> no, but Alex is fine because he'll use mum's credit card. <laughs> <laughs> Look at good, good, good choice, Thomas. Really good choice. When you said, oh, "Who the hell is this guy?" Yeah, really enjoyed looking him up. It yeah, because really I, I think that you know, we we spend time studying people we know, right? Yeah, and we know them, so it doesn't. But when you you Never research about someone great. you no, don't know, know, gee, your horizon expands so much, Love isn't it? it? Loved it, mate. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you very Thanks much for guys. today. Good thank done. you. Well, well done. Sir. Good Bye. done.